this is an exceptionally important program. So first of all, allow me to thank UNESCO. Uh, and congratulate UNESCO because this is a really great initiative with L'Oréal that you have and I think uh, exceptionally important. All of the indicators that we have uh, show that women are poorly represented in science and even more poorly represented in uh, technology and there are lots of indicators we do studies on the number of uh, women in international, cited as inventors in international patent applications. I'm almost ashamed to tell you the statistic. It's gone, in my understanding, from about 17% to 29%. It's still very low. Uh, and when you disaggregate it and look at it in different fields of technology, you see that it's, uh, you know, in automobiles, zero. Automotive technology, zero. And that's because we give toy cars to boys <laughs> and not to girls. We're very pleased that you're looking at intellectual property. Uh, let me give you two examples uh, of why intellectual property might be important. The first one is a rather non-scientific example, but I met uh, several years ago uh, Mr. Rubik, who was the inventor of the Rubik's Cube. Uh, and he's a Hungarian. And the Rubik's Cube was the first invention that he made. And at the time, he was uh, not very wealthy. Uh, he was a young uh, man. Uh, he didn't have many resources. And he could only afford patent protection in Europe and North America. And the Rubik's Cube became, of course, a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, and in particular, it was adored in Asia and they made zillions of Rubik's Cubes and he didn't get one centime out of that or one penny out of that. So uh, your intellectual assets can be extremely important and you do need to take care of them from a commercial point of view. The other example which is uh, more less ludic and more um, scientific is the basic patent on uh, genetic engineering and that's called the Cohen-Boyer patent and it was uh, patented if I'm not mistaken in the 1970s but as a matter of fact what happened is that the two scientists I think they were from Stanford and the University of California at Berkeley Cohen and Boyer went to a conference in Hawaii uh, and they gave a paper and they revealed the basic technique of genetic engineering uh, and that publication uh, disenabled them from getting any patent protection because it was no longer novel uh, when uh, finally it made its way to the University Technology Transfer or Technology Office and they assessed the significance of this in commercial terms. They ended up, because it's a technical area of, of uh, patent law called the grace period, they ended up getting a patent in the United States of America, but nowhere else in the world, and it was a basic, um, a very fundamental, of course, uh, invention in the area of life sciences. So uh, it can be extremely important to you uh, to be aware of the commercial potential of the science that you are performing and its applications uh, and to be aware that it's unfortunately a technical area and uh, many universities these days have technology and uh, management offices that can assist you in this. So and we're delighted that you are um, coming to have some exposure to intellectual property. We feel privileged of having such a such a detailed and exceptional course on intellectual property rights. Uh, from a scientific point of view, I have never been exposed to a course like this, and it's, com it's completely new for me. Of course, one has an idea, but one has many misconceptions as well. And uh, I, today we learned a lot. We learned about uh, the technology and innovation support centers, how our developing countries can uh, uh, profit from, from this, and uh, uh, and how we can help our countries develop in science and technology. It is very, very much needed. And in my region, in Latin America, uh, I think we, we should know much more about this because this enables us to know in what direction to go, to know how to, uh, of course, protect our developments. So we need m much more science. We need much more technology. 
We need many more women in science and technology. We also need many more women, as I said, scientists, but women inventors and women creators. So I think this will really uh, open, it, it, it enlightens us, and uh, I hope we can go back to our regions and, uh, and also transmit all what we've learned. So thank you so much. It's, it's a privilege, and uh, uh, I, I hope we can, uh, we can develop our regions with this. Maybe at one point in my research, I would get to a, a point where you're testing a drug, for example, and you would need to know this knowledge in order to patent the drug. Uh, in addition, I'm very much interested into science policy or uh, like getting more into stuff that contributes to the society more. So I really need this knowledge that the WIPO offers because you need to know the proper terms to use when you talk to people. You need to know what can be patent and what cannot be. So it's, it's very informative. I am especially interested in uh, the intellectual properties on uh, softwares, how to uh, protect them, and uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, information I am very interested in. Uh, and we had some training today, uh, some bullet points uh, about the software uh, uh, as an intellectual property that was important, I think. In the last section, the database uh, of patents and the, the searchable databases are very interesting. Uh, I, I will go back and see <laughs> which patents are available in my field. I will search for that and then uh, I will think about more uh, about our uh, research field in that sense. Today was very uh, busy and it was very nice to learn uh, different things uh, in, 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 uh, in this topic, uh, starting from the morning session uh, till the end of the session today. It was very interesting and I, ha uh, I have learned a lot of things and we had the sh chance to share our projects and our uh, stories as well with the people uh, here. Uh, and uh, I'm very excited about uh, meeting also the uh, undergrad st uh, students uh, from University of Genoa. Uh, and tomorrow we will learn about more uh, about the intellectual properties. So uh, I think tomorrow will be also great in, in the training. I think this course has been very useful because it has helped to answer some of the questions I had about, about intellectual property and acquiring patents. So right now I sort of have some ideas on the ways in which I could acquire patents and an idea of how I can circumvent the cost of acquiring patents. I really enjoyed the class about um, helping us think outside the box creatively, yes. It has actually helped to expand my thinking. So I'm very glad I took this course. I was really very excited to, to, to do this training course and it has been amazing. I have learned so many things. I never thought that it was so complicated and we have to take in account so many things. But yeah, I think that it, it's going to make a huge improvement in my, in my career. Because I, I can see that maybe not now, but maybe in the following years I can apply uh, all that uh, we are learning at the lab, maybe we can, you know, license or even patents. But I, at least I, I, now I know a little bit more about what I can do.